you may be forgiven for thinking that these otherworldly images are from the latest mission to Mars. But this bizarre landscape is located right here on planet Earth. This is Lacabe. Covering an area of 170 square miles, Lacabe is a vast saline lake straddling the border between Ethiopia and Djibouti. Fed by the Awash River network, there are no outlets to drain the lake. Over thousands of years, fresh water has constantly evaporated away leaving a highly saline body of water surrounded by salt flats. The main attraction for the most determined of tourists are these enormous geothermal limestone chimneys lining the lakeside. The entire area rests on three tectonic plates. Over thousands of years, scalding hot water from deep beneath the earth forced its way to the surface and deposited a mineral-rich mud. When the lake receded, it left these bizarre-looking features. Many are over 50 meters high. The lake is a central part of a wider zone in this area. IGAD's Biodiversity Management Program named it the Lower Awash Lac Abe Transboundary Conservation Landscape, or LALA TBCL. Supported by IGAN, local stakeholders from both sides of the Ethiopia-Djibouti border have worked together to produce an ambitious document called the Joint Management Plan. This aims to protect this unforgiving landscape and its inhabitants. Hussein Rayli is a regular visitor to this area. He is the project's technical advisor, employed by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, IGAD's partner in the field. Lala TBCL GMP, which is Lower Awash Lakabe Transboundary Landscape Joint Management Plan, is an ambitious plan for the transboundary ecosystem. Deep uh, objective that may help the local community is to uh, to help how to put in place uh, what already the local community, particularly on Djibouti side of the of the landscape, they initiate themselves, which is uh, the ecotourism, and uh, because of the the scenery, because of the features of the Lakabe on Djibouti side, attract people around the world. The, the ambition is to help and then maybe improve this to augment or improve the income for the local community who already initiated this, this ecotourism in the region. Ecotourism is still in its infancy here, with no marked roads, only the most dedicated tourists visit. But when they do, a warm welcome awaits at the only hotel in town. I'm walking again. Kamil Hassan Kamil. IGAD's joint management plan has identified tourism as a major factor in its ambition to improve the livelihoods of local communities. 
The introduction of a cross-border hiking trail would bring valuable tourist revenue to an area where a little extra cash goes a long way. But as Hussein Raylili has discovered, this embryonic industry will need nurturing and protecting. Of course, it's a very arid, very difficult ecosystem, but there is still a lot of threatened species, not a huge population, but it's still key species like uh, lesser flamingo, which is a globally threatened species. There are uh, some mammals like warthog, docker gazelles, submarine gazelles, leopard is still there. And the area is, of course, inaccessible, but the ambitious uh, objective of the project is to guide or to direct and support for the livelihood of the community that the long lasting resources are now decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and help them maybe how to sustain this difficult and harsh ecosystem. This is the village of Kutabuya. It's about 20 kilometers southeast of the lake. Conditions here are amongst the toughest on the planet. Temperatures range from around 30 degrees in winter right up to 50 degrees and above in summer. Everything needed to survive is in short supply here. For the people of Kutubuya, life was not always this way. This village is a relatively recent settlement. Not so long ago, the people here were nomadic, traveling the plains and hills around Lakabe. But the loss of this nomadic lifestyle in favor of settlement has introduced new challenges. Challenges which, according to the joint management plan, must be managed locally. The local management is very important because the local community here, they were nomad. They, they had a nomadic life. But nowadays they are settled. And the importance of the local management is to give a chance the very harsh resources to be managed. And if there is no management of what they have, things will go on forever. And previously their way of naturally locally management was to leave the resources sometimes, going to another place, getting back. And this was the local management naturally. But nowadays, as they are settled, they overuse, overuse, overuse. And once the limited resources is overused, the livelihood will change. And now the locally management important is to give a chance these small resources to be managed by the local community. But local management alone cannot solve all the challenges. For there exists a major threat which has affected vast areas of the entire region. And only intergovernmental action has any chance of combating it. <laughs> They call it the black tree or the devil tree. Prosopis juliflora was deliberately introduced into the Horn of Africa as a quick fix to regreen barren landscapes. But this alien species was too successful. Drought resistant and fast growing, this plant is now considered by many experts as a major threat across the entire Horn of Africa. The problem here is the prosopis. It's compact, and the prosopis is introduced species in the whole landscape, not only in the village of Kutabuya. And where we are standing now, that you are just seeing behind, were previously garden who were producing uh, vegetables, guava, and some mango trees. 
But nowadays we have just, just, just a prosopis. And even uh, the, 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 the animals, livestock cannot get anything from. And as you can see, it's deeply compact. Even animals cannot go in. And this is the main problem. And it's not only here at Kutabuya, but the whole landscape from Lower Awash to Lakabe Transboundary Ecosystem. I think a regional decision is needed to deal with this problem. One country cannot do it anything. This is need a regional decision, a regional policy that maybe IGAD can handle. Because it's all, all in the region, in the Horn of Africa. It exists in Somalia, it exists in Kenya, Ethiopia, Sa Sudan, and Djibouti, and even Eritrea. And all of uh, these countries individually, they can do nothing. And now it's the decision for IGAT to do something. The partners of the Biodiversity Management Programme have delivered their findings in the form of its joint management plan. But there's much work ahead. Policymakers have endorsed the vision of a community managed landscape but need to strengthen national policies to support this. Communities living in these harsh conditions will need further support to translate their plan into action and build their capacity to manage the region's remarkable natural resources for the benefit of its people. Local decision making, national level policy making, and international support must now all play a part in securing the future for life on the edge of Lacabe.